Uh, if it wasn't for jazz, I wouldn't arrive to folk music in a way because um, I discovered my own culture through like um, music of, let's say, Jan Garbarek, Keith Jarrett, Gurdjieff, um, and uh, other composers like Komitas. Uh, but when I discovered my own folk music from, from Armenia, but also um, all kinds of different folk musics from around the world, uh, for me it was, uh, I mean, it was a big uh, realization in a way, like a big, I opened a door into like an infinite possibilities of, you know, um, uh, treating that music and, and understanding that music. Um, and it's it's a, in a way it's a journey that never ends. It's like you the more you dig, the more uh, more you discover. It's um, and I, I mean I would say yes. Uh, the folk music is obviously the in, like the basis of all music in the world, and um, and that's why it's important to for me um, to to understand what, what it is. But at, at the same time, it's not just about importance. It's just, um, at this point, Armenian folk music is uh, like part of my veins, you know? It, um, um, I have to really make myself, um, really have to be concentrated to make sure I don't sound Armenian when I play, <laughs> if I need to. It's interesting you mentioned my uncle because he was uh, somebody that was very, very close to me. Um, and uh, he kind of directed me and, um, and advised me and also, um, uh, I guess he sort of protected me from my ego and, and, and making sure people don't take advantage of like this, um, uh, you know, a little kid that can play jazz, you know, so, so I'm, in a way, I'm very, very happy that I had somebody to guide me and to make sure he, he mostly made sure I practiced, which is the most important, you know, um, and, um, and, and, and we were, you know, very close friends and, um, he was always supportive of whatever direction I would, I would go. And um, yeah, uh, it was, um, ev I would say ev I, I started with rock, let's say, for example, like my father influenced me as well, as much as my uncle did. I had like the, my father's rock side, you know, like playing Black Sabbath and Led Zeppelin in the house. And then at the same time, my uncle was playing uh, Herbie Hancock and Chick Corea and Miles Davis whenever he was home, you know. Um, so I was influenced by both musics, um, but I always loved improvising. So I think that's, the, that's why I, uh, as much as I love composition and I compose a lot, I compose my own music, I, um, compos uh, improvisation is as important for me as composition. So, um, yeah.
Armenian church music tradition is very, very rich. There's so much music there that I, and I, since I discovered um, that music and I started listening to it, I was about 13, 14 years old. And since then I had an idea that one day I would do something with this music um, because um, religion aside, also uh, just just as music, it's just incredible music, you know. But also um, um, there are there are poets and, and composers who, you know, obviously Narekatsi is you know like for for Armenians Narekatsi's Book of Lamentations, for example, is like the second book after the Bible, you know. So so it's. Um, it's something that's very like deep into the Armenian tradition and in the it's in the hearts of every you know Armenian. So I grew up with that, um, and um, and for me it was natural to uh, sort of um, um, dive into this material and see what put it through my world, you know. Um, and um, yeah, poetry. I I just I I feel like. It's important for a musician or any kind of artist to 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 really enrich his uh, uh, inner world with a, a lot of uh, beauty, you know, um, like poetry, visual arts, uh, cinematography, photography. For me, those are all very important. Um, I don't necessarily think about cinematography when I compose. But it's all sublim subliminal. If your inner world is rich, then then um, then it is uh, uh, your music will most likely be more will have more depth. I feel like when I tour, I'm in a bubble in a way, and and once and there are I in a in a way I, uh, I try to like in a way protect myself with like this. Um, invisible plasma because because um, otherwise like my head will be in too many places and I would lose like concentration and and my thought of what I really want to um, uh, present and and what I really want to want to come out of me during concerts so touring tour we can talk about touring <laughs> life of a musician uh, for a long time but um, yeah for me the the most important thing is obviously when you walk on stage uh, and and you give all you have that's that's the for me that's the ultimate thing As much as I traveled in Armenia, I traveled through music to Armenia and historical Armenia. You know, um, in Armenia, uh, the, the mu music and dances from Armenia, for example, they come from many different regions, which is now uh, it's not Armenia anymore. But um, so army like this little um, part of Armenia contains the bigger Armenia and and traditions that are no longer you know they survived somewhere else you know um, and um, and 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 that's why also the music is and all like the uh, folk heritage is like really rich in Armenia there is like many styles of folk music you know uh, so um, um, as much as I physically traveled I also traveled through the music and through like poetry and through uh, um, in a way like almost like time traveled to <laughs> these places however in 2015 
uh, 15 and 16, we did, we did, uh, I did a record. I recorded an album with a, uh, the Yerevan State Chamber Choir, um, where we played music from 5th to 20th centuries, uh, Armenian religious music from, from those periods. And the idea for that was to take the music um, that survived in nowadays Armenia to its roots, where it was born. So we went to many different monasteries in uh, nowadays in Turkey, and we performed um, in this like either in front of the monasteries or or inside um, inside the churches. And it was uh, for me that was um, a very uh, I don't know like otherworldly experience. I felt like I traveled to to the times you know like. 9th century, 10th century, or 5th century. So it was that was for me one travel that I will remember my whole life. Yeah, I mean, there is moments in your, in uh, of when I was, you know, in late high school and and um, uh, the beginning of going to college. There are people, there are musicians that I met that I've you know, collaborated with, uh, and I just listened that made a big impact on me. Yeah. You know. This feeling of uh, that I want to create something and the, the excitement and um, um, I don't know, almost like a, like a spiritual kind of a, uh, an experience for me. For me, music is that. Um, uh, but obviously, I mean, there's also humor in music, you know. Like and, and all all the composers, I feel like have, if if you make if the music is too serious, then like it's it's out of balance. Um, uh, for me, you know, but but it is, but obviously, um, for me, music should give that feeling of um, that you want to create something that you're all of a sudden you're you have a realization or like an like, you know like a s spiritual experience. Uh, yes, I mean, if you were playing something that's um, not you, that you're not being true to yourself, and you know that you know you should be doing some, this, but you're doing that. Um, I mean, it's 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 again, it's like you you're playing in front of God first of all, and then and then if you think that way, then you're really at least it's my opinion, obviously. 
that um, I stay true to my what I want to do. You know, if you try to play something that you please the audience, maybe you're not being entirely true to yourself.